And as this issue came to my attention from losing significant amounts of, of solar uptake from whatever these aircraft were putting above my home, I had no choice but to investigate and I was astounded at what I found. Didn't like what I found, started to test my rainwater, found there was an incredible amount of toxic metals in that water. Those metals matched geoengineering patents and those amounts have escalated over the course of five years in the case of aluminum as much as 50,000 percent in a single rain event. Target California. Now in the case of California, one we have a shredded ozone layer in northern and southern hemispheres now. The power structure is trying desperately to hide that from us. We can see our trees around town here. They're burnt to a crisp. So, and we had a recent disclosure I'll talk about in a minute from NASA. But we also have a very straightforward equation. We know from available science that when you aerosolize the atmosphere, it diminishes and disperses rainfall. This is not about cloud seeding to create rain. Again, it's about creating artificial, toxic cloud cover. So, we have satellite imagery, which I'll show in a moment, and, and this is what blocks our storm track. This is what's keeping the rain from falling in California. If you see off the U.S. West Coast, if you look closely near the bottom center, you can see the aircraft trailing. I don't know how visible it is to all of you, but that entire marine layer is aerosols. And all that blows in on us. And what happens when they aerosolize in the atmosphere? Again, it shreds ozone, and it diminishes and disperses rain, it reduces evaporation. This is a, t as far as the rainfall in California, it's a 2 plus 2 equals 4 equation. Now, I presented this data to, to Gavin Newsom in the Capitol two months ago in his office with his aide. There's no question they got what I passed on to them. But apparently they took up the data. As in this example here, very hardy native plants, completely flash out dead. That looks like it's been hit with some kind of a chemical. And we've only seen this in the last couple of years. And there's another one there, there, back over there. We're seeing mature madrone trees, which are 70, 80 feet high, flash out dead, just like this. USDA refuses to investigate it. The pH typically around here should be about 5.6. Well, since the contrailing got heavy, I watched the pH here in these forests, well, go up, I guess would be the word. From 5.6, it went about 20 times more alkaline. Very big red flag of fallout from these materials are pH changes to the forest floor. We have very extensive studies from the U.S. Department of Agriculture on the soils in our region, and those soils have changed in five to six years. The pHs have changed in this, in this area as much as 10 to 12 times toward alkaline in five to six years. I've personally been in the forest testing with USDA soil scientists who just scratched their heads and seem to have no explanation for incredibly profound changes in pH, which is affecting the ecosystem here tremendously. Aluminum buffer action, aluminum hydroxide is what we think it is, uh, plus the uh, barium carbonate, strontium titanate, strontium oxides, barium oxides, probably some aluminum oxides in there, that this has apparently driven our acid soils about 20 times more alkaline to about 6.8. There are simply too many dots here that connect. Our skies are almost never blue anymore. That is a named consequence of geoengineering. The amount of lost sunshine hitting the planet right now is beyond belief. If people look up the term global dimming, they will see that fully 20% of the sun's rays that reached the planet several decades ago are no longer reaching the planet. I mean, that's a profound change that few people even know is occurring. And you have very visible occurrences in the sky from the aircraft, a very visible sun blocking, expanding, dingy trails that are exactly what geoengineering patents describe. Heavy aluminum, I'm talking like in the 40s and 50s up to three, four, five thousand. That's still common. Uh, barium, strontium to um, oh, somewhere 40 or 50 to again about two or three thousand. Same food, both barium and strontium. Where is this mountain of metal coming from? Why is asthma, ADD, Alzheimer's, autism, all elements related in many studies to aluminum or particulate inhalation? Why are these, why are these ailments going off the charts with no apparent ex explanation? Why has respiratory mortality in the continental United States gone from eighth on the list to third in six years? And no one seems to ask any questions why everybody, uh, every other person has asthma now. Why every other commercial on TV is a is an allergy medication. 
And, and again, uh, when, when David Keith, the world's most recognized geoengineer, was asked on the record, had there been any studies done as to the consequences of dumping 20 million tons of oil into the atmosphere, his answer was no. Now, in the case of California, one we have a shred of ozone that we're northern and southern hemispheres now. The power structure is trying desperately to hide that from us. We can see our trees around town here. They're burnt to a crisp. So, and we had a recent disclosure I'll talk about in a minute from NASA. But we also have a very straightforward equation. We know from available science that when you aerosolize the atmosphere, it diminishes and disperses rainfall. This is not about cloud seeding to create rain. Again, it's about creating artificial toxic cloud cover. So, we have satellite imagery, which I'll show in a moment, and, and this is what blocks our storm track. This is what's keeping the rain from falling in California. If you see off the U.S. West Coast, if you look closely near the bottom center...